The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> It's after dinner at the great Gildersleeve's house and the evening paper has been parceled out to the family. Leroy has the sports section. Marjorie has the fashion news. And the great man has the financial section, which carries the crossword puzzle on the back. Marjorie? Yes, Anki? Uh, what's an eight-letter word for an African anteater? That's aardvark. Aardvark? What's that? An African anteater. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, they eat ants. I know it, Leroy. <laughs> How do you spell it, Marjorie? Uh, A-A-R-D-V-A-R-K. Well, that's the way I had it. Two A's, eh? Oh, boy. Hey, Uncle, let's go fishing at Grass Lake tomorrow. What? Look, look here in the paper. The big fish that was caught. A 90-pound swordfish. Swordfish in Grass Lake? Let me see that. Leroy, this wasn't caught in Grass Lake. It was caught in Florida. Sure, but it shows they're biting. Oh. <laughs> well, let's go, Uncle. Tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, we'll have a lot of fun. 6 o'clock. Mr. Banks took piggy fishing last Saturday. Oh, well, how many swordfish did they catch? Well, they didn't catch anything, but they went fishing. <laughs> Why don't you take Leroy fishing, Unky? Now, oh, Marjorie, a fish hasn't been caught in Grass Lake in three years. Besides, Leroy has to practice his piano tomorrow morning. Well, gosh, can a little kid have one day off? I practice ten minutes every day of the week and two hours every Saturday, faithfully. Faithfully. I have reason to doubt, young man, that you even touched the piano last Saturday. Sure I did. I must have. Let's not fib, Leroy. I happened to meet your music teacher on the street, and from her report, I don't think you went near the piano last Saturday. Well, she's prejudiced. Yes. I put out good money for your music lessons. A small fortune for a very small return. Marjorie? Did Leroy practice the piano last Saturday? I don't know. When it's time for Leroy's two-hour session, I always leave home. What? The same as you do. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll find out if he's practiced. Bertie! Yes, excuse me? Uh, uh, please step in here a minute, will you, Bertie? Oh, gosh, don't we have to call witnesses? You can't tell those whoppers around here and get away with them, Leroy. What do you want, Mr. Gilsleeve? I've got a sink full of dishes out there. Well, I got a little boy full of fibs in here, Bertie. Leroy thinks he should go fishing tomorrow. Now, tell me, did he practice the piano last Saturday morning? Well, I'm usually busy in the kitchen, Mr. Gilsleeve. I know, Bertie, but you can hear Leroy playing in the kitchen. You can hear that touch all over the house. Did you hear it? Well... Yes or no, Bertie? Well, I usually have the window open on Saturday morning. A lot of ambiguous noises coming in and out. Bertie, did you hear the piano? Well, I heard something. You did? <laughs> I heard music of some kind. Of course, it could have been the good humor man. All right, Bertie. Very evident Leroy did not practice his piano. What do you think I should do with a boy like this? I think you should take him fishing. Oh, my goodness. So do I. So do I. Well, I'm not taking you fishing until you learn to tell the truth. Well, hello, Judge. Come in. Good evening, Marjorie. Hello there, Leroy. Hi. What's the matter with Leroy? He's in the doghouse tonight. Oh? Is the lord of the manor in? He's upstairs shaving, Judge. He'll be down in a minute. Well, I thought we might have a little game of checkers. He has a day. Oh? And I don't have time to play checkers tonight, Judge. So I see. You did a nice job of shaving, Gilbert. Smell nice, too. Don't go sniffing, you old goat. 
That bay rum is not for your benefit, believe me. Sorry I can't play checkers with you, Horace. Good night. Well, as long as you're leaving, I'll walk away with you. I'm just going next door to Adeline's, Judge. Well, I'll walk that far with you. I don't think I should go in, though. I don't either. <laughs> Good night, Marjorie. Good night. Good night, Leroy. Leroy, say goodnight. What seems to be the matter with Leroy? Uncle Mort won't take him fishing in the morning. You bet I won't. Why don't you take him, Gilday? It's none of your business, Judge. Or do you think you'll be too tired to get up and go fishing in the morning? After all, the angling you'll do tonight. <laughs> I'm not taking him for a very good reason, Taurus. I caught him in a lie about practicing his piano. Leroy, a lie? Yes. Gosh, you don't have to tell everybody. It was just a little white one. Little white ones grow into big ones, Leroy. If I've told him once, Judge, I've told him a hundred times, anyone who tells lies is bound to get into trouble. And you're in trouble. Oh, that's too bad. I hate to see the boy unhappy. That's all right. I think I'll go up to bed. Now, Leroy, don't you go to bed feeling sorry for yourself. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> this hurts me more than it does you. It does not. <laughs> Wait a minute, Leroy. Wait a minute. Why go to bed so early? I'll stay and play a game of checkers. Checkers? Well, if you don't mind, Judge, I'd rather go to bed. <laughs> what? Good idea. Go to bed, Leroy, and stay there. Okay. But Piggy's father took him. And I don't want to hear any more about fishing. You understand? Yes, sir. That boy. Oh, uh... What is it now, Leroy? Oh, uh, good night, Leroy. <laughs> Let's get out of here, Judge. <laughs> I hate to be hard on the boy. Gracious, Throckmorton, where's your mind tonight? Huh? Well, it certainly hasn't been on me. I'm just sitting here like a knot on a log. Certainly it has, Adeline. No, it hasn't. Your mind hasn't been on me at all. Come on, let's do something. Let's sing a song. Sing? Oh, Adeline. Come on. Well, that might boost my spirits a little. Well, come along, then. I was at the dime store today and picked up some Jolson music. Let's start off with Sonny Boy. Sonny Boy? I bought it with you in mind. I imagine you sung it many times to little Leroy as he climbed upon your knee. Uh, uh, little Leroy. <laughs> if you don't mind, Adeline, I'd rather not sing Sonny Boy tonight. Oh, come on now, the introduction. Well. Climb upon my knee, Sonny Boy. You are only three, sonny boy. You've no way of knowing. There's no way of showing what you mean to me, Adeline. Oh, go on, that's beautiful. You sound so sincere. Well, when there are gray skies I don't mind the gray skies You make them blue Sonny boy Friends may forsake me Let them all Forsake me You'll pull me through Any boy <laughs> I don't feel like singing anymore, Adeline Well, what's the matter, Throckmorton? It's so sad Gracious I think I better go home But Throckmorton, it's only nine o'clock I know, but I have to get up at six o'clock in the morning What for, for heaven's sake? Take little Leroy fishing and have a lot of fun <laughs> Cork 
on my other pole, will you? Well, I try worms again. You do the fishing, Leroy. And don't rock the boat while I'm reading. Oh, what are you reading? This paper that Bertie wrapped our lunch in. She would wrap it in the want ad section. Mm-hmm. Too bad, Uncle. I don't know. Here's a place where we can buy fish and it's on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Leroy. Well, Let's go. We've been out here three hours, and nothing's happened. But you know how fish are, Unc. They travel in schools. They'll be by pretty soon. Yes, yes. My neck's getting sunburned. Let's go home. Oh, Unc. Why don't you turn around in the boat? I did that when my nose turned red. (laughs) Let's pull up anchor, Leroy. Everybody has left the lake. Just one more hour, Unc. No, Leroy. You see? There's a boat still on the lake, a motorboat. Uh, it's probably out joy riding. No, no, there aren't any girls in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Could be the game warden then. Uh, heck, and we haven't any fish to show him. Hope he stops. Maybe he can convince you there aren't any fish in this lake. Yeah, it's the warden, all right. They always make a lot of noise around fishermen. Now I bet he says, "What are you doing, fishing?" Hello there. Hello. What are you doing, fishing? <laughs> I am. Having any luck, sonny boy? Sonny boy. No. Has anybody else caught anything? They haven't started biting yet today, but I know they're here. Yes. I suppose you have your license. Well, the boy doesn't need one. He's only 12, but size 16. Yeah. Stand up in the boat for the warden, Leroy. Never mind. How about you? Me? I'm not dumb enough to come out here fishing. You're out here? I just rode my nephew out. Yeah? Yeah. Now, let's not get tough with the game warden, big boy. Well, let's not get tough with me either, Buster. I happen to be Throckmorton P. Gildersley, the water commissioner. I don't care if you're King Neptune. You have to have a license to fish. I'm not fishing. There's nothing I like better than to slap a fine on guys who get tough with a game warden. There's nothing I like better than to turn off the water on guys who get tough with a water commissioner. (laughs) Where do you live? I have my own well. (laughs) Just don't let me catch you fishing. I'm not fishing. I've heard that story before. Him and his big badge. Well, that does it, Leroy. We're pulling up anchor. We're going home. Okay. Hey, Young, the cork went down. I got a bite. Leroy, what did I tell you about telling what you? Pull it up, Leroy. Uh, say, it looks like a bat. A big one, too. Well, Leroy, he's a beauty. Oh, boy. Land him, Leroy. Oh, not on me. Sit oh. on him up before he pops out. Sit on him? Okay. Throw your line back, Leroy. It may be a school game. Hey, there's one on your other line. Grab it, Leroy. They're biting. He's even bigger. You better let me pull him in, Leroy. Hold on. Give me that pole. I can't. You haven't got a license. You know what the warden said. Oh. Well, horse him in then, Leroy. Hey, there's one waiting on your other line. <laughs> We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. The other day, Marjorie stopped me just long enough to tell me about a party she was giving that night. All the girls are coming over, and Bertie's going to make stacks of waffles. I'll bet I know what's going on top of those waffles. Parquet margarine, right? Naturally. Bertie always serves parquet. Smart gal, that Bertie. Delicious parquet is the perfect topping for rolls, muffins, and pancakes, as well as waffles and bread. It's the favorite spread in millions of American homes. Parquet even improves Bertie's waffles, and that's growing some. That fresh, wholesome parquet flavor always makes good things taste better. Parquet is nourishing, too. Only choice farm products go into parquet, and each tasty pound is fortified with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Another important thing, parquet, the margarine of craft quality actually cost less today than it did a year ago. Well, I'm glad Bertie is serving parquet as a topping, simply because it tastes so good. That's the reason millions of women serve parquet margarine. It tastes so good. Parquet is a better buy for both bread and budget. Try it, friends. Next time, ask for parquet margarine. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. Well, 
let's get back to things in Summerfield. A car is pulling up in front of the great Gildersleeve's house, occupied by one sunburned uncle, one happy nephew, and eight very surprised fish. for taking me fishing, Unc. I had a wonderful time. That's fine, Leroy. Boy, eight great big bass. And I caught every one of them. Let's not gloat, Leroy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry you didn't have a license, Unc. It's quite all right. I was just along for the ride. Let's get out, Leroy, and take your fish with you. Oh, but you didn't catch any. You can have them. What? So long, Unc. Leroy, you come back here and clean these fish. Oh, God, Unc. I have to go practice my piano. After you were so nice to take me fishing, I wouldn't think of skipping my piano lesson. Leroy. And I'll practice for full two hours, Doc, like you said. Oh. <laughs> I can't clean fish. I can't stand the way they look at me with those big brown eyes. <laughs> oh, Bertie. You got me, Miss Gillis, please? Bertie, guess what I have here. I don't have to guess. I can see Fish. Now, Bertie, you're very much in favor of us going fishing. I was in favor of you going, but I didn't think you'd be bringing any back. Well, uh, take them along, Bertie. We'll have them for dinner. We'll have them for dinner, all right, just as soon as you get them clean. Yeah. <laughs> but, Bertie, Leroy and I caught the fish. Now it's up to someone else. This calls for a little cooperation. Well, you can count on Bertie to cooperate. There ain't nobody can cook fish any better than Bertie can any time you get them clean. I know, Bertie, but you don't... That's one thing I say for me. Nobody can cook fish any better than Bertie any time you get them clean. Bertie, that's not cooperating. Mr. Gilsley, when I cook steak, I don't dress no steer. You know who takes care of that? Somebody way back in Kansas City. They don't look to Bertie. (laughs) Bertie, I can't take these fish to Kansas City. They've got to be... That's right. They've got to be clean before they're cooked. Now, stand here ready to cook them just any time you get them clean. Oh, my goodness. That's one thing you can count on from Bertie. Cooperation. Uh, Cooperation. Uh, I guess I better take them around in the back. Maybe I can find some place to bury them. Leroy doesn't like fish anyway. Oh, hello, Adeline. I'm sorry if I sounded a little upset last night when you left so early. But I thought it was marvelous of you to take Leroy fishing. So did I, last night. Oh, look at the fish. Did you catch all those, you great big fisherman, you? Well, Leroy, uh, that is, um, uh, Leroy and I did have a pretty successful morning. Well, I'm so proud of you, Throckmorton. And uh, gracious, you got such a gorgeous tan, too. On your neck and your cute little nose. Mm-hmm. Don't touch it. <laughs> oh, I wish I had my camera so I could take pictures of you holding those fish. I never saw such big ones. What are they, flounders? Yeah. Flounders? No, I just sat on this one. <laughs> well, they're beautiful, yeah. Frogmo. Bass. They are pretty nice, aren't they? Well, I won't keep you. I imagine you want to get cleaned up. Cleaned up? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I may just go downtown for a minute with a fish. <laughs> Hi, Commish. How's the water department today? Oh, hello, Floyd. What do you think of these? Hey, bass, they're beaut. Yeah, quite a string. Say, ain't you liable to get into trouble? Sane and fish out of your reservoir like that? Floyd! <laughs> there are no fish in my reservoir. That's only kidding, Commish. <laughs> yeah, he's come from Grass Lake. Yeah, I didn't think there was any there either. Did you catch all those yourself? Well, uh, true sportsman doesn't like to gloat, Floyd. Who do you suppose caught him? Well, gosh, why didn't you ask me to go? Yeah, uh, took the boy along. Oh, you took the kid out, huh? Great stuff, Commish. Did he catch any? No, oh, yes. How many? Well, as a matter of fact, he uh, he caught exactly uh, this many. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. I didn't know there was biting. Uh, you got to know how to catch him, Floyd. Look at this big one. Ever see a gamer-looking fish? He's gamey, all right. Huh? I don't want to rush you out of the shop, Commish, but you're going to take him home now? What? Well, I had him home, but nobody was very interested in him. It wasn't? 
Hey, I got an idea. Lovey's out of town. Why don't we have a fish fry over to my house tonight? Fish fry? Sure, invite all the Jolly Boys over. It's Saturday night. We'll throw a wing ding. Sounds great. I'll go around and invite the Jolly Boys. Okay. And leave the fish here for you to clean. Sure, that... Wait a minute. <laughs> well, Floyd, you're handy with a razor. You can scale them in a jiffy. Me, a licensed barber, scrape fish... What do you want me to do, lose my professional standing? Yeah, but Floyd... What kind of clientele do people think I got? Come in here and find fish scales all over the floor. <laughs> but they have to be clean, Floyd. And the man who furnishes the fish shouldn't have to clean them. Okay, you caught them, I furnished the house, let somebody else clean them. <laughs> How about the peeve? Peavy? Yeah, he's got the equipment there at the soda fountain. I'll bet he could clean them between customers. If. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Peavy will go for that, Floyd. Ah, you can convince him, Commish. And don't wait too long. Them fish are getting pretty tired. Huh? Come on, I'll show you out the door. Yeah. Well, I should have a lot of fun at Floyd's tonight. I can never get these fish cleaned. Better keep them behind my back till I find out how Peavy feels about these things. Oh, hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> beautiful day, Peavy. Isn't that so? Yeah, it's been beautiful all day. You doing too? You bet. <laughs> the air's warm, birds have been singing, the fish have been biting. And I've been too busy to notice. Huh? What are you doing, Peavy? I'm working a crossword puzzle. Crossword puzzle? Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve, what's an eight-letter word for African anteater? Uh, the African... Oh, that's aardvark. Everybody knows that. I didn't. It starts with two A's. A-A... Wait a minute, Peavy. You're a little behind on your puzzles. That's yesterday's. Yes, I know that, Mr. Gildersleeve. I always work yesterday's puzzles. What? Then if I really get stuck, I can always look up the answer in today's paper. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Peavy, put down that puzzle and take care of your customers. No, oh, pardon me. What can I do for you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, nothing. Peavy, went out to Grass Lake this morning. No? Yeah, what for? To fish. Any luck? Any luck. <laughs> take a look at these, Peavy. Did you ever see a more beautiful string of fish? Never in my drugstore. <laughs> Did you catch all of those? Uh, did I catch them? Well, here they are. Uh, would you mind keeping them below the counter, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> I never cared very much for fish. Oh? Well, that's too bad, Peavy. The Jolly Boys were going to have a big fish fry tonight. I'm furnishing the fish. Floyd's furnishing the house. But I guess you wouldn't care to come. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you would? Well, Great. Then I imagine you'd like to cooperate with us and clean the fish. No, no, I wouldn't say that either. <laughs> I'll tell you what I will do, though. I'll furnish the cokes. The cokes? But who's going to clean the fish, Peavy? Have you tried Chief Gates down at the jail? He's a nice, amiable jolly boy, the chief. Say, he might clean them. He probably has an empty cell you can use. And I, I don't imagine the prisoners are in any position to object. <laughs> Good idea, Peavy. Bring the cokes, and we'll see you at Floyd's tonight. Very well, Mr. Gildersleeve. I wouldn't be surprised if Leroy caught those fish. Yes, nice job you're doing there, Chief. Well, thank you, Commissioner. The least I can do is clean them after you caught them. Yeah. You must be quite a fisherman to pull in big ones like these. <laughs> well, I, I got to know how to do it. Uh, how'd you happen to go out, Commissioner? Uh, Leroy wanted to go, and I nearly didn't take him. Discipline. Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, no, no. Just caught him in a little white lie about his piano practice. Well, you have to watch those little lies. Sometimes they grow pretty big. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, gentlemen... Hmm. The game, Morton. Uh, what are you doing here in the cell, Chief? Cleaning fish? Yeah. How are you, George? Fine. Just came in to report a few game law violators. Well, hello, Water Commissioner. Oh, hello, Mr. Morton. Hey, that's a beautiful string of bass you caught there, Chief. Well, I'd like to say I caught them, but that wouldn't be the honest thing to say. 
Mr. Gildersleeve here caught them. Gildersleeve, oh, oh, I love to catch up with a guy who gets tough with the game warden. Mm. The idea. <laughs> City official fishing without a license. What's this, Commissioner? Well, come to think of it, Chief, I didn't really catch these fish. But I thought you I said... didn't say I caught them, Chief. I just didn't say I didn't. <laughs> little Leroy caught them. Leroy? I don't see how a little tyke like him could pull in big fish like these. But, Chief... Water Commissioner, I'd like to ask you a few questions in the Chief's office. Now, wait a minute. Chief, you believe me? Mr. Gildersleeve, I think I'd like to wipe my hands of this whole thing. Do you realize what an embarrassing position you've placed me in? But... The Chief of Police cleaning illegal fish. <laughs> <laughs> They're not illegal, Chief. I wasn't even fishing. Call Leroy. He'll tell you the truth. All right. I'll call the boy. I want this cleared up as much as you do. I'm innocent. I've got a witness. You better have. Follow. Shh. Hello? Uh, Leroy, uh, this is Mr. Gates. Oh, hi, Chief. There seems to be a little discussion downtown about who caught those beautiful fish today. Uh, yeah? At first, your uncle led me to believe he caught them. He did? Now then, who really caught them? Well... Oh. <laughs> Give me that phone, Chief. Leroy, you caught those fish and you know it. Sure, Unc, but if you want me to tell a little white lie for the fellas downtown, that's okay with me. Oh, Leroy. We'll see if Gildersleeve can get out of that one in just a minute. If you've never served parquet margarine, lady, try it. You'll love that wholesome, fresh flavor. You'll join the millions of women who have found that parquet is the perfect topping for bread, rolls, and muffins, for pancakes and waffles. Parquet is made from only the choice products of fine American farms, and each tasty pound is fortified with 15,000 units of vitamin A. It's a favorite spread for America's bread, and it's the spread that's winning new friends every day. Millions of women first tried it because they knew it was economical. It's now their day-in, day-out favorite because it tastes so good. Next time, ask for Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. You nearly gave me a fine, Leroy. Remember, always tell the truth. Sure. Yes, sir. You can't go wrong if you tell the truth. Yeah, now eat your fish. I think we should all toast Leroy, the mighty fisherman. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, no, wait, gentlemen. I propose that we sing a song for our honored guest and provider, the young Isaac Walton who fared Oh, forth Judge, with I real... thought you said a song, not a speech. Hey, how about he's a jolly good fella? Okay, put on a jolly good fella. Leroy, we'll do the singing. Do you want all the credit? Here we go. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, Leroy's a jolly good fellow. My boy, good night, folks. That nobody can deny. The Great Gilded Creed is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> if you're a homemaker who likes to save money, listen to this. A stainless steel cake and pie knife with a sparkling six-inch serrated blade and a handle of gleaming agatron. An honest one dollar and a quarter value, it's yours for only 35 cents and one top label from a package of Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food. It's the perfect cake and pie knife for your table, perfect for kitchen use. Send 35 cents and one Pabstet package top label to the Phoenix Pabstet Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77, Illinois. Got that? 35 cents, one Pabstet label. The address again, Phoenix, P-H-E-N-I-X, Pabstep Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.